Hey guys, it's Dark with Cyclone FPV, and earlier today I did a video on the X9 Lite, the uh, FrySky transmitter right here, and I showed you guys how to do the firmware update on it using FrySky's website, uh, their download tools and so forth, and also using OpenTX, but not downloading the firmware from there. Then I got a call, I, I contacted FrySky about it, I contacted the guys here in the States about it, uh, Ron and Dustin, both, shout out to you guys, you guys are uh, what makes the company great, and I appreciate y'all's support, because they are the kind of guys that, you know, they stay a step ahead, and so, they're pretty well versed in all of this and they decided to help me out with something and the question i had was uh what, how are we benefiting in here let me let me go ahead and split this here like this um all right so we've got the you can see the x9 light down here and the problem was is that i could not get it to work well not get it to work i could not find the x9 light uh, model when we were doing the last video and i was using 2.2.4 of OpenTX companion and they said well you need to go back now and check because there's a 2.3 that's been released and actually since the 11th of september it was 11th and then the 13th and the 14th i think they released three different versions or upgrades to it uh, but it just came out and it has the x9 light in it so now that i just did that one video and i'm going to go back here and i'm going to show you um if you download 2.3 what you're going to do okay and i'm going to try to speed it up a little bit because you can refer to the first video but here's basically what's going to happen so what we're going to do is um, i'm going to go ahead and split screen uh, these two like this let me see if i can do this there we go so i'm going to split screen and what we're looking at right now is we're looking at the folder that i use so i have my downloads folder and in there i have my transmitters folder and in there i set up different transmitters and this is the folder i did for x light x9 light right okay so here's what i had what I had was OpenTX 2.2.4, which is this one, which we're all used to seeing, right? And um, what I didn't have, and this is 2.3, so let me go ahead and open that link. Uh, no, I do not want to do that just yet. What do they do? It's not seem to be, no. No, and that is one of the errors that I got because this is looking for a model I don't have. So anyways, let me just get to 2.3. So here's 2.3, and you can see the screen, uh, the, the um, opening splash screen difference, right? So 2.3, um, does have the X9 light, but there are some caveats to it to get it to work properly. All right, the first thing is that I'm going to try to keep these side by side a little bit. Um, so what we can do, and we can do this to kind of compare, but uh, so I already have the card contents folder. Now, if you go to do the Open Companion 2.3, and let me just make that, make that bigger, and if I go, I'm going to delete my radio profile. Uh, so let me go to settings, radio profiles. I'm going to delete this one. This is the one I created. So I'm going to delete it. Click yes. All right. Now, <clears throat> um, if you go and you set up a radio profile, and I'm going to do a new one now, and the new one is going to be uh, add radio profile, and we're going to call it the, well, we're going to find the X9 light, which is right there, which didn't exist before, right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type, actually, <clears throat> let me just put this here. I'm going to put Tarek, Tarek's uh, X9 light, and we're going to call that that, right? Now, there's a couple of things that I need to point out. The first one is that there's no more multi-module option because it's actually built in. This was told to me today by Ron, and so far from what it looks like, it's true. Um, so, and I'll tell you, the other things is all the scripts for uh, the Spectrum and um, uh, Crossfire uh, are both in here already. So, what we're going to do is there's, there's a couple tabs here that don't exist anymore. But here's what I am going to select. I'm going to select the No Heli option. I'm going to select the, um, I guess for right now, uh, the no uh, global variable change. It'll tell you here, it's, you're going to disable global variables. And I think for the most part, I might just do that. I, the blue scripts I'll take, not the EU, we don't need that. And the font and the flex, I will do. Um, I'm going to check these out later. And I, the auto update doesn't apply to me, but it does apply to some other uh, instances. Uh, Ron explained that to me earlier, but I have to do some more checking into it to see. It will not apply to this one, though, uh, or to any of the other radios that we're using here, the X90 Plus 2019 edition or whatever. So for right now, I'm going to check these, right? And basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting the Lewis scripts, but the compiler, compiler is already in here. Uh, I am changing the no um, uh, global variables to disable those so I don't need them. Um, and I am going to use the new font, and I'm putting the flex uh, support on here, and then I'm removing any menus for heli, okay? Uh, outside of that, that's it. So let's go ahead and look at the next option, which is to select our folder for our... Um, card content. So again, I'm going to go back to my downloads folder and I'm going to go to transmitters and there is my X9 light and I'm going to keep the same card contents folder. Okay. Select that folder, right? And I am going to uh, do the backup will be the same in the same area, transmitters, X9 light, and then we're going to go to backup. There's my folder. I'm going to say select. Okay. Now here's the kit. Here's the kicker right here. So these I'm going to enable and I'm going to go ahead and drop down T-A-E-R because that's how I have mine configured. So I'm going to enable automatic backup. I'm going to append the version for the file name. I don't mind that. Um, well, I guess that's fine. Okay, and then I'm going to offer to write it after I download it, right? 
here's the kicker. If you go to application settings, and this is where Ron helped me because I didn't know this, I didn't even know this was an issue. If you leave it on release is stable, right? Here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna say, I want it to check for downloads. And here, these are the specifications of the download. This is the latest download. So I wanna go ahead and say download firmware. The error is gonna come up that says there's no release for this and I have to change uh, switch uh, release channel, right? Okay. If I go to do download SD contents, I'm gonna have somewhat of the same error page cannot be displayed. The reason being is because the parameter I set forth in my settings up here uh, said that I only want stable releases. What you have to do is you have to tell it I want release candidates, which is uh, the nightly releases, I guess, for testing. Uh, uh, sorry, not the nightly builds on stable ones. I want to release candidates, the ones that have gone through that part and are, are at least a little bit more stable and they're in the testing phase, right? Sorry, I didn't mean to say the nightly ones where they're unstable. You don't want to do those, but you can do these and still get some software. So now let me go ahead and click that and click OK. Now watch what happens. When I tell it to download the firmware now, I'm going to say download, it does find it and it's telling me where it wants to put it. Now I've already downloaded this once, but I'm going to tell you where this needs to go. In your firmware folder, you can do something like um, create a new folder and you can call it, um, uh, let's see, see uh, let's call it X9B, sorry, X9 Lite dash FW. Okay, that'll be my firmware folder. And in there, I'm going to put, I know all the selections I had. So I really don't care about this long file name. All I really care about is the date, 0911619, okay? That's my file. So I'm gonna download that and I'm gonna put it, oh wait, I didn't even turn my radio. So let me go ahead and get into my radio here in DFU. Okay, let's do that. Let's go ahead and plug in our USB. It's gonna ask me if I wanna write the firmware. And I'm gonna wait, because it's gonna pop up my SD card contents real quick. They're gonna start popping up here. And there's the mail person. I'm sure hoping they come pick up the packages because we got a ton of them. So let me click, here go the SD card contents. So I'm going to get rid of all these and I'm going to click yes. I want to write the firmware now and I'm going to click write to TX. And it's almost done. I'm going to be done here in just a second. Okay, so now I'm going to click OK and close. Now, you also can download the SD card contents now. Watch what happens. So I click here and I click download SD contents it's going to give me the option to take me right here and I can download these. Now I've already done this. Now you need to do this, but I've already done it, right? So I'm going to show you what happened then. So I downloaded those. I'm going to click OK. I downloaded those and they are sitting right uh, here. This is the zip file, okay, of the contents. This is the zip file of the contents from uh, FrySky's website, all right? This is what was downloaded from FrySky's website this morning. This is what's now available. It's an update. If you don't put this one on, but you do the firmware upgrade, you're gonna have an error on your screen that says it's expecting uh, 2.1, 2 right? So um, what you wanna do is you wanna right click and extract all on the new one. Click extract all. It's gonna take a little while, so just hang tight a minute. And so what we know is that this is our old card contents folder. This is the card contents folder we had when I did the FrySky one earlier today. What my biggest, main, my main concern here is I wanna preserve Two folders I want to make sure of that I haven't messed with or I don't lose the data is one is my firmware because since that update I added the firmware. Sorry, there's the mail postman's carrying all the product today. Um, there's the firmware for the RXSR. There's the XLite firmware that I downloaded from FrySky's website, and then there is the um, downloaded firmware that we just did just now that I'm going to use to upload uh, to update the bootloader. Right. So I don't want to lose my firmware folder in my card contents, and if I've created any models, I don't want to lose those either. Right now, I don't have any here because I haven't done anything yet with this. So you may want to save those. I know for sure for mine, I'm going to save the firmware folder, right? So when this card contents is done extracting, I'm going to go up here and wait for it. So it's right here and it's almost done. You can see the progress here, okay? So it's done now. It just opened and it's saying it's done. So here's my original card contents folder, all right? And here is the extracted new card contents. I can move this screen over, and this is the one now. It's going to be like 138, uh, uh, me uh, yeah, 138 megs. So if I go to properties, I can verify it's 138 megs. Okay, so all I care about right now is I want to open this up, and I want to take all the contents, except I'm going to hold the control key on my keyboard and the firmware click the check mark. I'll take everything else and move it over. Unless you have models, you may want to save models or screen, whatever it is that you've added. Save those if you want. Otherwise, take it and move it over 
and you can drop it in the card contents folder right here. And it's going to copy, but it's going to prompt you because it's going to end up having to overwrite some of these files. So we're going to replace it. All right, so let it replace real quick. Okay, so those are done, right? Now, the firmware folder I didn't replace, so there's my file still there, right? Usually, I would tell you at this point, I would format my SD card, and that way I get a fresh load of this stuff. But I'm not really going to worry about it right now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, okay, I just put the new software on here. I've moved the firmware to here. Um, you know what? Maybe I will. Let me see if it'll freeze. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to freeze or not, but let me just see. If I tell it to format, I don't think it'll work. Um, so I'm going to get rid of something here because I know that on my end, I'm going to get rid. I know the files here are kind of different, and I want to I want to change the format of it. So I guess if I try to, let me see if I can format it. Let me go up here. Uh, I hate to do this because I have a feeling it's going to screw up, but let me just try it. Let's try a format real quick. If it doesn't work, that's fine. I'll do a quick format. Let's just see if I can wipe the card. Eh, it's already pretty much not working, I guess. <sighs> okay, so that's not that's going to hurt me uh, a little bit here. So obviously don't do it like that. What I'll do is I'm going to take my USB card or my USB reader. I'm going to do it again on the computer. So, but now I have to wait for this dumb thing to stop. Okay, so let me try or quit immediately. I'm going to cancel. I'm going to close. And I'm going to go ahead and just eject the... Uh, it's already done. So let me go ahead and take this card out. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take the card out real quick because that is... Um, so watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take the card, the SD card. I'm just going to put it in this USB reader right here. All right. Oops. I'm going to pop that in the computer instead. It'll make it easier on myself. Okay. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Okay. Let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and format the disk now. Click start. Click OK. And make sure that we're done. Inject. OK. Try again. OK. So we're good there. Just a little bit of a hassle because I tried to do it. And I, I had a feeling it would fail, but I hadn't tried it in a while. So let me just let me just get out of all this here and let's go ahead and try this again now. So I'm going to eject. Let me make sure this is out. So I'm gonna put my SD card in. At the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Oops. Let's exit. And it's gonna have a bunch of errors now because I did not, I don't have the card in there. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and um, put the USB card in and there it is right there and we'll go ahead and format it real quick and the only reason I'm doing that is because I, I like to make sure I always start off with a clean fresh setup okay so it's formatted now so let's go ahead and close that safely eject the uh, disk or the SD card put that in and remember you're going to put it in upside down and I guess as a good rule of thumb, you know, now that you cannot format this card properly, I've had it work sometimes, but not on this. All right, let's go back into DFU mode. Go ahead and plug in our cable. And at this point, I'm um, just going to go ahead and tell it to synchronize. And hopefully it will find it. Although it looks like, um, let me see if I can get this to, let me close this down real quick. Okay. Okay, so now that we now that we have our stuff downloaded, I went ahead and already took this card. I had to cut the piece here because I got interrupted by the delivery guy. But um, so I'm going to go ahead now. I've removed the SD card, and I'm going to basically I've already got my card contents folder done. I'm now going to put this back in my computer and format it. And that, again, that's just a preference to me. I don't like to just update it. I'm going to go ahead and format it, and that's like I said, it's just what I'm uh, doing here. So I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to click format. I've already cleared it once, but I'm doing it so you guys can see it. So let me click start. Click OK. OK, that's fine. And let's click Close. Now, I'm going to go ahead and safely eject the card. Uh, I don't know why 
it's in use. Let's try again. There we go. Okay, let's take that out. Put this back in the radio, upside down, like that. Oh, actually, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you take the card out, I forgot this is the one thing that was the whole purpose behind this. I want to copy the files over so I don't have to do it uh, at the radio speed. I can do it directly connected to USB. So now that the drive is formatted, right, and it's right here, it's E, it's empty. So I'm going to go to my downloads folder and I'm going to go to my transmitters and my X9 Lite. And I'm going to go to my card contents folder and there it is, the new card contents. And I'm going to basically highlight all that, click copy. And I'm going to go to my uh, D or E drive here, whichever one it is. And I'm going to click paste. I'm just going to move those all those files over as fast as possible. But I did not, hold on, before I even do that, I want to go to my card contents. Let's get rid of all the languages first. Sorry, I should have done that. That would make it a lot faster. So let's delete those. And let's delete those. Okay, now our card contents is, what, 16 megs again, like it's supposed to be? Let me go to properties. So it's 18 megs now, and it was... Uh, where is my stuff? Oh, that's the old one. So the card contents have got 138 megs. Let me get rid of this, because I don't need that now. All right, so my card contents is here, and I did take out the sounds, all the languages, because I don't need them. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy this over. So now you're going to go, and we're going to... We're gonna, Right click and copy, and right click and paste. And you can go ahead and overwrite. I mean, it doesn't matter. We didn't move anything, barely anything over, but you will get an overwrite here in just a second. Go ahead and replace those. All right, our card contents are now actually on the drive as well. So now we can go ahead and eject that. All right, now it's safe to remove it. So now when I take that and I put it in the radio, let me turn the radio off here real quick. All right, let's put it in upside down just like that. I can't get my little fat fingers to push that in all the way. There we go. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and head into DFU mode. Okay, and we're gonna plug in. All right, now if I do a comparison between the two, I'm gonna hit this uh, synchronize here and it's been freezing up a little bit, so bear with me a second. Let me, let me close this and let me, um, let me do a task manager here because I've been noticing this has been locking up my machine. So we'll click end task. And let me make sure that everything else, I think everything else looks all right. Just that for some reason. All right, here we go. Let me go ahead and get back into 2.3 and see if I can get it to run smoothly here. Okay, so now that we're back in, now I'm going to make sure I'm in the right model. So let me go to my radio profiles, X9 Lite, that is. And I'm going to go ahead and synchronize, and it is going to synchronize both, but I'm going to say um, uh, copy only if newer, and I'm going to say I want to go uh, from the source file. Now, they've changed it. It used to say from radio to transmit or whatever. So um, I'm going to go to the destination folder first, which means I'm going to take what's local and send it up there. So I'm going to click start. And honestly, there really shouldn't be anything because I've already, I already just copied it all over, but we're going to let it run anyway. Okay. It won't take very long. Well, I said it wouldn't take long. I'm pretty sure it was taking quite a bit. But it's skipping all of them because I already copied them over. And so what you can see here is your, while it's doing that, you need to remember that your download, let's see, wherever you put your folder needs to be organized like this. You have your old card contents, which I'm not even sure you need, but I just always keep mine. Uh, you have the new folder firmware that I downloaded for um, uh, the radio from uh, Fry Sky's website. And then in my con card contents, there's all my stuff uh, broken down properly. Uh, and that's what's actually being compared right now. And so far, uh, it has created some. So let me just see what it's creating. I forgot to delete that language. <laughs> of course, check is there. So um, let me go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and I think delete that now. So let me just go ahead and click delete. 
And I think if I can, I'm pretty sure, I'm gonna click close. Pretty sure I can at least delete the file. Uh, because if I synchronize, I don't believe it'll come off. Let me just delete the file and see if it'll let me get away with that at least. Excellent, okay. And now if I go to sync one more time, it should go pretty quickly now, and there it goes. Okay, so we're looking good here. So our card contents now on our D drive, which is in the radio, and our card contents, which is in our folder here, are exactly the same, and everything looks good. Okay, so we've got everything set. Now, with that being said, um, we have already downloaded, we've done everything, we've got the card contents on there. So now what we're gonna do is close out of the software. Okay, and we're gonna safely log out of our USB. Okay, and then we're gonna pull the cable and scroll to exit. There we Welcome go. to OpenTX. There we go. Whoa. There we go, let's do it that way. Okay, so we have our fail safe warning. And there we go, everything's in there now. So if you now go to menu, click page, and you go to firmware, and you if, you, if it didn't work before, if you hadn't done it before, uh, then you would click here and you would go right here, hold that down and click flash bootloader and it's going to automatically do it. But we already did this, but I'm just showing you exactly where everything's at on here. So now if you go to menu, you hold down your button and you just click page and you start going around, you'll start seeing there's your tools feature now. You have crossfire configuration, spectrum, and then you've got some price sky options here as well. And you can go uh, start scrolling around and see what other, uh, you can calibrate if you want. Um, and to do that, you just do this and then hit enter. Put the sticks in the center position and then hit enter again and then calibrate and then go straight up straight down left and right up down left and right corners all right and then turn your dial here there you go and then hit enter and you're done okay so that pretty much gets you now to be able to use a radio uh, and that, that should pretty much do it so that's the, the difference from what we did earlier today and I'm sorry I know it's, it's kind of long-winded and stuff but the uh, the support for um, um, stable builds that are not going to be like uh, testing are coming. All right, so they maybe maybe as soon as tomorrow when it's available. Uh, but for right now, you can either do it the way the first video did, where you have like you do 2.2.4 and you download from FrySky's website, or you can upgrade your OpenTX companion, and that's what I want to show you. Sorry, let me show you that real quick. So if you want to do that, um, open the web, and here's where I downloaded mine. So I went to open tx.org and then I scroll down here whoops sorry go to opentx.org and then scroll down um, until you see uh, right here opentx 2.3.0 a uh, release candidate and you see right there it's it was done on the 14th this on the 13th is on the left all these are fairly new when you click that scroll down you can read all the stuff it's actually pretty good reading then you click this right here and it's going to automatically start your download run that one uh, I've already done this so I'm going to cancel this but what you can do is you can actually keep 2.2.4 and 2.3 up. So you, it doesn't delete the other program and you end up with something like this. So I hope guys that this helps you. Um, this is how you set this one up uh, and there'll be more options down the road. Um, I did bind this like you saw before to the um, the old, uh, what you call it? Uh, protocol, the 16 channel protocol and not using the access protocol and it worked fine. And now I am going to, the next video will be, I'm gonna take this, um, uh, X, uh, this, uh, X4, oh my gosh, the X4R, it's not a, it's not an S bus. That's the hack of the S bus. So the X4R, and I'm going to actually update it to the access firmware and we're going to see what happens then. Okay. I also just got the shipment in earlier. You can see some of those fry sky boxes behind me. There are some limited edition, some special edition. I mean, they all are named 2019, which means they all come with access on them, but they are dual compatible. They just not compatible with eight channel. Uh, receivers, but there is going to be, from what I understand, a module that will allow you to run a channel down the road. Okay, hope that helps, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, it's been a long day, so I'm sorry for the rambling, but uh, always here to help. And I've got a lot of product here. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll try to do a video for you. If not, say flying. God bless, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.